Contention. Critique. Conjecture. Conclusion. The Huddle with Corporate Cars, saving you thousands on luxury European vehicles. And tonight we have Jock Anderson from the New Zealand Herald. Hello, Jock. Good day, Larry. Good to see you in print again, Jock. Good and uh, Cameron Slater from Whale Oil. Hello, Cam. Hey, Larry. Can I get your reaction first before we go into the Cabinet stuff? Uh, Cam, we have Nikki Hager's home has been raided by police. What do you see in it? Well, the police have uh, acting on my complaint. They've been conducting an investigation and they've obviously had evidence or reason to suspect there might be evidence contained in Nikki Hager's house and uh, they've executed search warrants and picked it up and I'm pleased to see that the the police are actually investigating uh, a crime here and uh, pursuing this with vigour. Do you see anything at Jock? You want to make a comment about this raid? Oh, no, I think, uh, as Cameron says, uh, he's made his complaint. Uh, this is uh, the police following through on that. Um, I note that, um, that Mr Hager uh, is confident um, that the police took nothing that will help them in their investigation. Well, that, of course, remains to be seen. Um, if it means that we're any closer to finding out um, who this uh, person or being Rorschach is, well... Um, Let's keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. Cam, he's talking about journalistic privilege. Well, it's a bit rich, isn't it? The guy didn't. The guy wrote a book using stolen, uh, illegally obtained emails and communications from a from a criminal hacker. He didn't bother to ring a single person who was mentioned in the book. Didn't ring me. Didn't ring anybody else for comment. Didn't give anybody a right of reply. And now he has the temerity to claim journalistic privilege. I think he's going to find that'll get overturned very quickly indeed. And then, of course, there's David Fisher's case where he claimed the same thing about his book and the judge said, forget it, pal, it's not journalistic endeavour, it's a book and it was written for profit and uh, you're out of here, produce your evidence. And so I think Nicky Hag is going to end up in the same spot. I've got to say here, though, Larry, that um, I, in my opinion, I don't think that Nicky Hager is a journalist. Mind you, with the greatest of respect uh, to Cameron, I don't think he caught, falls within that category either, despite what the High Court has conditioned. <laughs> um, so it's going to be, it's, it's interesting, it's going to be a watch this space situation, I guess. All right. Well, it's interesting too in that you raise that case of mine, uh, uh, Jock, because uh, the judge said in that that I needed to tell who the sources were uh, because it was in the, if it was in the public interest for me to publish the information, it's also in the public interest to find out who my sources are. So I think my case will actually be used against Hagar as well. Watch this space. We'll come back in just a moment. Jock Anderson and Cameron Slater on the huddle. It's now 17 to 6. What will Larry say? It's Larry Williams Drive with ANZ, providing business banking expertise near you on Newstalk ZB. It is now 15 to 6. Cameron Slater from Whale Oil and Jock Anderson from the New Zealand Herald. Jock, issue number two, the new cabinet lineup. Some new portfolios created. Anything specific you want to talk about? What about the creation of a minister in charge of the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service? Yeah, I think that's a very good move and I think that New Zealand, like other countries, has to move very quickly uh, in its efforts to contain um, the spread of, um, of global terrorism. And, um, you know, I think this is probably a bit overdue and uh, we need to uh, be part of the real world, uh, despite what some naysayers write books about. And um, I think this is a good move, and um, he's, he's giving uh, further um, uh, responsibility to uh, Chris Finlayson, of course, in the similar area. But yes, a good move. As far as the, the new cabinet uh, is concerned, I also think it's a good move. He's brought up some, uh, some promising um, younger um, MPs, younger ministers, younger associates. Clearly, um, he's looking at, a, uh, at, the, at the succession plan for the future. Um, you're getting some of the younger ones in there, particularly in the area that I'm interested in. Amy Adams, 43, Minister of Justice, um, a lawyer, of course, um, has got a pretty good future. She's got a majority on her Selvin seat of 20 and a half thousand, so I don't think uh, she's likely to be uh, to be tipped out any day soon. But uh, yeah, I think it's a cabinet for the future. I think he's looking six to nine years down the track. Do you go along with that, Cam? Uh, well, John Key's always looked like having a succession plan uh, in place. He's refreshed his cabinet at regular instances. There are some interesting uh, changes. Uh, 
making... Uh, it was expected that Jonathan Coleman would become the Minister of Health. Um, uh, Amy Adams, I think, is a bit of a surprise for me, being the Minister of Justice. I hope that enables her to settle down a bit from some of her after-hours activities. Um, the the interesting one is Anne Tolley, who's uh, given up police and corrections and is now the Minister of Social Development. And I believe that that will be a very short role that she will be uh, taking there. She's being groomed to take over as Speaker uh, when David Carter retires. And uh, I understand that's not going to be too far away. OK, and uh, Jock, uh, Judith Collins, <clears throat> the Prime Minister has just told me it'll be at least another year before she gets a sniff of a cabinet's uh, a minister's portfolio. Well, a year's um, not a long time uh, in politics. They say a week is, but I don't think a year is. And um, you, let's not forget um, that Judith Collins was a capable minister in the various roles that she held. Uh, controversial in some parts. She had some difficult roles, especially in ACC. But you can't afford to let someone um, with her experience and capability and determination um, to just sort of, you know, waffle around to the back benches forever. I agree with that, uh, Jock. It's not going to um, be very productive for John Key to have such a capable person who has a very strong following in caucus sitting there essentially twiddling her thumbs. Yeah. Um, that's fraught with danger. I would think, uh, even though he's saying at least a year, I would think that there will be some sort of moves at rehabilitation shortly after she's exonerated by all of the various inquiries that are out there. And, Jock, what do you make of the power outage across Auckland, another one at the Penrose substation again? Well, it's very interesting because um, uh, I was listening to um, Hugh Rennie QC earlier today, and he was the one who conducted the inquiry um, after the big blackout in central Auckland in 1998, I think it was. And he said that basically, if I'm you know, recording what, what he said accurately, they're really in a bit of a cleft stick, this particular substation at Penrose, because it's in a very, very narrow part of the Auckland Isthmus, and it makes it very difficult to actually have another cable or another backup facility built or installed or put in at that particular area. So it seems as if there's going to be, there could well be, difficulties in that particular substation but of course the other thing is of course if we want these infrastructures um, to be constantly upgraded and able to carry the extra load then we've got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But this issue of Penrose it's been identified before Cam. And well there's a problem with Auckland isn't it Larry it's the same with public transport it's the same with power infrastructure any particular even water infrastructure we live in a, in a, in a city that spans two harbours and has a very narrow isthmus it's only about one and a half kilometres wide at the, at the narrowest part. So we're always going to have this problem, uh, but it is something that needs to be addressed. It's something certainly that's going to have some questions asked about Vector. But I think what's more concerning is the, is the sooky la la behaviour of some of these people that are without power. I mean, we had a guy on the television the other night blubbing about having to give his kids a jam on bread and couldn't cook bacon and eggs. I mean, oh, the, the poor the, devil. I mean, he's obvious, I mean, anyone who can't cope with not cooking bacon and eggs is not the sort of person who could whip out his barbecue and go and, go and, uh, and rustle something up. So there's a whole lot of half men and panty waste that are out there <laughs> who aren't really coping. All right. Thank you, Cam, and thank you, Jock. That is Jock Anderson and Cameron Slater on the Huddle. Sport to follow. It's now 9 to 6.